Hello and welcome to Charter Local Edition Northwest. Today we're at the Capitol in Salem, Oregon, and my guest is Senator Ted Ferrioli. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's us. a pleasure. Thanks for having me. You're in the thick of the session and everyone wants to know what's going to happen with education and their kids. Well, uh, we've got a recent uh, poll that was done by the Oregon School Boards Association. Very informative. It talks about um, Oregonians want better outcomes and they want their kids to have opportunities uh, that come from the school system. Uh, and we're all trying to figure out where the sweet spot is. The uh, Oregon Education Association and others have asked for uh, funding in the neighborhood north of $9 billion. Uh, that is probably beyond our reach. The uh, quality education model that tells us what we should be spending is $9.2 billion. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, survey that Oregon School Boards Association uh, has, has published is telling us that Oregonians want us to cut spending overall before they'll allow us to raise revenues. So we're trying to figure out where the sweet spot is. Is it $8 billion? Is it $8.4 billion? Uh, that conversation is lively. It's ongoing. We haven't settled it yet. Uh, but at the end of the day, what I believe is that most legislators will vote for the largest amount that's offered for the funding of K-12 education. Uh, outcomes need to improve, and one of the things that we're seeing that really seems to work is uh, the thing that Oregonians told us to do in the last election cycle, which is fund career technical education which connects People, kids job skills. with skills and mm -hmm. real jobs in the community. So that's going to be an emphasis in whatever plan that comes forward. Yeah, and that is so beneficial to students who aren't traditional school students, who don't like school, who very often in a traditional school setting can be made to feel like they are not smart and not valuable, and they very much excel in some of these programs. Well, we it's can, a win-win for everyone. We, we really need to connect the dots. Uh, young people can go through, men or women, through high school, get a, a certified nursing assistant credential, and immediately go to work in the healthcare professions. Uh, other young people, men or women, can go through a module on welding and immediately go into the community with pretty good jobs that pay a family wage. Oh yes, welding is so, very you know, important. There, there's a whole number of technical skills out there uh, where we really have uh, plenty of opportunity with a growing population in Oregon. And the kids that normally would drift away are so fascinated by the idea of earning a certificate and being able to find a job that we're seeing uh, attendance rates above 90% and graduation rates in the middle 90s, 95 and 96. That is a turnaround for a lot of schools. Well, and just for that student to have that final feeling of, I found something I'm good at. I found something I enjoy. I mean, that's life changing, especially for people in those young ages. Yes, and to have uh, employers interested in that young person to bring them into a setting where they'll learn more skills, that's just a great thing. Oh, yes. and it, to have an employer be able to find somebody who wants to come and work and do the job and be committed to that too. Right. That's terrific for an employer as well. Right. Now you touched on the growing population. People yeah. seem to be moving to Oregon and Portland in particular yes. by the droves, yes. which increases the need for transportation. That's so true. Uh, there's greater need now than ever. Well, we uh, in our last legislative session in uh, 2016, we came very close to having a transportation funding package it foundered on the low carbon fuel standard, which adds costs, but doesn't really fill potholes or fix bridges. Uh, Gotta have that. We brought that issue forward. We're dealing with it here in this legislative session. We have four different groups working on various aspects of transportation, uh, multimodal, uh, bike paths, uh, uh, you know, just various kinds of uh, uh, improvements that we need, repair, and remediation, uh, filling potholes and fixing bridges. Uh, we don't have the sweet spot yet. We haven't figured out what the number is, whether it'll be uh, 10 cents or 20 cents a gallon and what the duration of the tax will be. But I believe at the end of the legislative session, we'll have enough cooperation and enough critical mass in the middle uh, to move forward with some sort of a transportation package. I only have time for one more question. Sure. One of the things I appreciate about you so much is with your experience and your calm nature, you tend not to be 
overly sensational about things. Yes. And many people are concerned, and there is some sensational conversation regarding health care. Right. Well, we're in the middle of a transitional period. Uh, the um, uh, Affordable Care Act is being debated hotly, and there's a proposal to reorganize it and massively reform it. And that's caused a lot of folks to be uh, concerned. You know, uncertainty always breeds fear. But I'd just like to remind Oregonians, Oregon's always gone its own way on health care. We have uh, been among the first in the nation to uh, negotiate for and receive waivers to the level of care that we can provide with federal dollars that we receive. Uh, our waiver was extended by the Obama administration for six years. Uh, we've got the Oregon Health Plan. We've added 400,000 people to Medicaid coverage. And now Oregonians uh, are more uh, covered than they've ever been with uh, access to health care. The, the, the challenge is whether it's affordable or not. Mm -hmm. uh, while we're in the middle of this transition, I just remind folks, uh, we still are receiving transfers from the federal government uh, in the billions, uh, 1.6 or $7 billion will be added to our health care resources. Uh, we have a uh, hospital tax and the hospital associations come forward and said that they could actually contribute more to help leverage dollars and to help uh, increase the resources that are available uh, for providing health care. Uh, and finally, uh, when we get to the uh, point where we'll uh, know what is in the Affordable Care Act, and this may be months from now, yes. I think Oregonians will uh, uh, rely on the fact that we've always gone our own way with health care. We've always constructed a program that uh, provides the best possible services for the most number of people. And I expect us to sort of stay in that mode. Uh, folks, uh, for whatever reason, maybe they don't ha haven't fully uh, been able to accept the outcome of the election, and there's some anger about that. Uh, but we've always had a kind of a shrill, uh, voice uh, or many voices surrounding the uncertainties about health care, at the end of the day, Oregonians are going to have the best health care that we can deliver at the most affordable prices. Ted, thank you for joining us. We appreciate oh, you so much, you. and we wish you good luck in this session. Well, thank you very this much. This is your Senator Ted Ferrioli. I'm Dana Cowley, and thanks for watching Charter Local Edition Northwest.